Hi and welcome to these videos on Adobe InDesign CC Advanced Tips and Tricks. There's a whole lot of useful information in here that you're not going to find easily in books. Things like RGB and CMYK blending modes, how to create and save table formatting, how to put images into type, type on a path, all kinds of useful stuff. If you like it, this is my company and this is my website. Please visit me there and if you're kind enough to give me your feedback, I will get back to you. Now I'm going to show you how to put type on a path. And it could be any drawn path. It can be a line, a straight line, a squiggly line. It could be an enclosed shape. Anything you want to draw, you can then add type to that outline, to that stroke. So I'm going to start with an ellipse. And I want a perfect circle, so I'm going to hold down the Shift key as I draw it. And then I get the Type tool, but not just the Type tool. It's the second one down on the flyout, the Type and a Path tool. And if I hover over the edge of that shape, you'll see a little plus sign appear. And if I click, there is a cursor insertion point. So now I'm going to type. And I'm going to make that a bit bigger. So I'll select it all and then tell it to be 48 point. And there it is. You'll see that there's this stick at the beginning with two squares hanging off it halfway up. Now if I hover on the left-hand side of the sticks, I get a little vertical line with an arrow pointing to the left. That is the end of my type block. And if I move this slightly to the right, it changes. Now it's a vertical line with an arrow pointing to the right. And that is the beginning of the type block. And if I click and drag, that repositions it and the type moves accordingly. And if I click and drag this one around, wherever I leave it, that's going to be the end of the type block. And if I pull it too far, then of course I get the red cross indicating overset text, and I would have to deal with it. So I'm going to drag that back around again. Now if you imagine the midpoint between these two, and then drew a line right through the center of the circle out the other side, somewhere here, and I'm on it right now, but can barely see it. There's a little stick icon. You see that tiny little blue thing? And when I hover over it, there's a tiny horizontal line with an arrow pointing up. Now that means, right now, that the text is outside the shape. I could drag that and put it inside the shape, and the text will move. Now sometimes it's impossible to see that little line, because there's type right over the top of it. What do you do then? Then you go type, Type on a path, options. And the flip box here is that little stick. Now if I had type inside a frame and it was too cramped, like this looks too cramped now, I could use tracking to spread it out. And I would use a positive number to spread it out. And indeed that's what happens here. However, if the type is outside the path, it's the reverse. If I use a positive number now, it's going to scrunch it up. So if you're aware of that, you won't be fooled. Now there's several different ways that the type will be positioned on the line. This is called rainbow. We've also got skew, 3D ribbon, stair step, and gravity, which is identical to rainbow. And you've got different ways of aligning it to that stroke. This is aligned to the baseline. This is an ascender. Here's a descender. This is centered. How about this? I want part of the type to run around this shape, but then I want it to leave and continue on a drawn line. So I'm going to draw a line. I'll get the pencil tool, and we'll do a line like this. That should work. Now at the moment, that's just a line, and I couldn't attach type to it. But if I get the Type on a Path tool and hover over it, again, there's the plus sign, and if I click, I could now add type to that path. OK, so I'll select this again, and there's the end of my type, and I'll pull it around to here. There's the red cross, click on it, hover over the path, link icon, click, and there's the rest of my type. Looks a bit squished, doesn't it? Well, let's drag this up first to roughly where it's going to be. 
And then I could go type, type in a path, options. Now in this case, I want to give that a positive number to spread it out a bit more, which it did. How about if I then wanted it to link into a regular frame? Well, I'm going to need a bit more type to begin with because I don't have enough. So if I get the regular type tool and click at the end of that and then type is very, very cool indeed. Wasn't room for the whole thing, was there? And I've got that red cross again saying overset text. So now I'm going to draw a regular type frame and then click on the red cross and click inside the frame and there's the rest of my type. And I could drag it up to here, maybe rotate it a bit, make the angle a little bit more believable. And of course I don't really want to see these lines, so if I click on that and go to the swatches window, there's no indication here that that color refers to the text. It refers to the line. And if I click on None, it's gone. And if I do the same thing on this shape, that's gone as well. Now I'll press W to go into Print Preview. And I think that says it pretty well. Type in a path really is very cool. You can do lots of fun stuff with it. So I hope you liked that video. I hope it's really helpful to you. And if you think it might be, please do visit my website. Send me your feedback. I will respond. You can also find links to all the places that host the full course if you're interested and a lot more stuff besides. What have you got to lose?